Good day, everyone. Today, guys, we're going to discuss a document coming from the District Attorney General with regards to the 10 errors committed by a nurse here in the United States named Rodonda Vot, including the five red flags and five warnings, which led to the death of that particular patient. And now, this is very controversial because she is being charged criminally here in the United States. Not a civil case, rather a criminal case. So, let's start. For the document, for the sequence of events of override, Number one, Vought pulled up patient profile in active dose system and could not find the medication prescribed by the MD and or reviewed approved by the pharmacy. Then, failed to contact pharmacy to confirm medication order before overriding a the system. Then, Vought begins the override. So that's the main sequence of events. If you can find a medication, especially during the transition of your EMR or electronic medical records, you can just call the pharmacy first. That's the best thing you can do. Because every nurse here in the United States, usually they have a phone with them or there's a phone close by. So like for in my previous work, every nurse or every nursing aide has their own phone assigned to them with their own particular number. So if we need anything from them, we can call them directly. So if you need something from the pharmacy, we can call pharmacy directly. So whatever we need, we can just uh, grab our phone, which is usually with us. It's either in our pockets or like attached here and we can just call them. So that's how easy it is. So it should have been a quick fix, really. Then for the first warning, override medication should only be accompanied by stat orders or when the clinical status of a patient would be significantly compromised by the delay that would result from pharmacy's review. On our case, it wasn't an emergency situation. Uh, the patient from the CT scan only needs um, some medication to help her calm down because she has a, like a mild case of claustrophobia or claustrophobia so she needs to have that medication so by definition if the medication is delayed it won't compromise her health meaning you have time to find an alternative way or a different way in order for you to get the medication properly then someone mentioned before or commented before that the management should be liable for this because uh, in order to override particularly those uh, high dose medications or high alert medications there should be two nurses to pull that medication yes that is correct but partially correct though no. Because remember, Radonda Vought uh, tried to get it from the medical surgical unit and it wasn't there. So she went to a different uh, Akidos, which is located in an ICU setting. Then someone mentioned before, in their neuro ICU, uh, Vecoronium is normally used for their patients regularly. Being in the ICU setting, having the second need for the RN witness to pull that medication would compromise the health of other patients in that particular area. So I think that's the one of the main reasons I think pharmacy might have removed the need for the second witness. And I think for general use, uh, IC nurses has more access with different kinds of medications versus with the medical surgical nurses. That has been the same setting with uh, my previous facility and this facility right now. Then, in my previous work, if I need to get a medication from the IC pharmacy, I could not use my account. Pharmacy has placed a restriction on my medical surgical unit account in order for me not to get medications from that IC setting, which is a good uh, safety measure, right? Which Vanderbilt could have done with Rodonda, right? No, unfortunately. Because Rodonda is labeled as help for all nurses, meaning she needs access to all the floors in order for her to work properly as a help for all nurses. And also given the fact that she's normally working in a ICU setting. Vought begins to override by typing the letters VE to search for percent. Vecuramine bromide comes up first on the list as Akido searches by generic name, not brand name, as by default. Versed is a brand name for medication and midazolam is a generic name. Yes, here in the US, we normally uh, mention things like when we say it, we say it with a brand name. Like for example, Versed or uh, Motrin, Tylenol, whatever the brand names we have, we normally say that. But on our Pixies or Akidos, normally, um, generic name is the st standard uh, way of, of displaying the medications. So that's normally the typical thing we have here in the United States. And on our medication administration record, normally both of them will be displayed. Like uh, example, Versed, then down here will be Minazolam. So we get to practice both of them, generic and the brand name. Then number two warning, system prompts user with a pop-up screen asking for a reason for the override with justifications such as urgently needed, such that delay might cause patients harm. Then prescriber is physically present and can oversee administration and clearly states paralyzing agent on top of the list. 
user must select a reason for the override and press another button to continue with the override. Again, this is not an urgent situation. Like I said, the patient only needs something to help her calm down. Then she actually chose prescriber is physically present and can oversee uh, administration, which is not true, really. So there was no physician really who will oversee her giving of that particular medication. So for nurses out there, do not invent, okay? Do not invent or click whatever that's not true because it's like, uh, it's a legal document. It's a part of your documentation process. So just clicking for the purpose of just clicking it, it's not correct. You have to do it first, then click it and make sure that is correct. That's the right reason for you. Then for my previous work and my current work right now, for Pixies and Omnicell, both of them, whenever you do an override, there's always a uh, last option wherein you can put others or a different reason. So wherein you can type freely or whatever your reason is. So you can put in like a system error or a transitioning of EMR, EMR documents or MAR not communicating with the Akidos. So you can put all of those reasons. Whatever reason that you have, please type it there and do not choose whatever is not uh, appropriate for your particular reason. Then, the word paralytic agent was first noted on the screen, prompting that the nurse should have noticed that. Because regularly, for other medications, when you do override, um, paralytic agent doesn't normally pop up on the screen. Then, number three, warning. Screen returns to the selected medication, vecuronium bromide, with the notion of paralytic agent. So again, it's pumping there that you took this medication with the full complete name, okay? And also with the paralyzing agent. So it's like the Akidos asking you, do you really want this medication? A drug that makes people paralyzed? Then warning number four. Another pop-up screen appears showing an alert once the vecoronium bromide is selected. Warning, that is a paralytic agent and the medication causes a respiratory arrest and that patient must be ventilated. And the user must then press another prompt to remove the warning. It's like the machine is asking you again, do you really, 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 really need this medication for your patient? It's like, you sure? Because this medication can cause cardiac arrest and your patient needs to be ventilated immediately after giving this medicine. It's like the machine is telling you that. Unfortunately, she just clicked yes. Then warning number five. A uh, user is asked to select quantity of drug and at the top of the screen is another warning for paralytic agent. And also, a yellow caution sign highlighted alert appears on the Akidos. It's like the Akidos machine is telling you that the word paralytic agent is still there and she's tried to do something like to put a sign for you. Like it's normally like a triangle sign to tell you that something's different with this medication that you should know about. It's like a warning sign on the road or whatever stop sign on the road. Unfortunately, she just clicked yes. Then it was asking you how many medications or how many vials do you need for this paralytic agent with a warning sign. And of course, you just took one, click one, and click OK, unfortunately. So those are the five warnings that happened during the process of taking out the medication from the Akidos via overriding process. So five warnings was shown to her face, like telling her. Okay, now let's move on to the red flags. Bot then failed to respond to a number of red flags between the time she removed the paralyzing agent from the drawer or the acidose and then administered the drug to the patient or the, for the victim who was awaiting at her uh, PET scan. Number one red flag, pecoronium bromide comes in a powdered form as opposed to a liquid form like Versed or Midazolam. There is a big difference between them. But I think one of the reasons why she didn't really mind it because uh, true enough, there's a different kinds of medications being uh, delivered to our hospital, like different brands. And some of them come in different kind of forms. So I think that's one of the reasons like, she's going with. But on the next warning, which is warning number two. The cup for the Vecoronium Bromide bottle is red and states paralyzing agent. Hmm. Normally, none of our usual antibiotics or any medications have that. So normally, those high-dose alert medications that can really cause something urgently or something bad that will happen to a patient if you administer these medications, that's the time they put it there. So for this particular medication, there is a warning on top of it. So normally, if you click or remove, you could have noticed that, really. Unless you were like just click doing it this way without actually looking at it. So that's one way because uh, I think like she said before, she was distracted with her trainee. 
Then, number three red flag. Vought would have had to read the instructions to reconstitute on the Vecoronium battle, yet went forward despite the fact that the battle said Vecoronium bromide and not Versed or Midazolam. Yes, uh, actually, uh, Vought was able to read the instructions on the back of the battle. It says her to mix it with particular this amount of uh, liquid, like a saline water. Yeah, she was able to read that particular part of the vial. Like there's a longer version of it, but she wasn't able to flip it around and read the actual name of the medication that she was actually mixing. That is definitely a red flag. Because normally, whenever we mix a medication, you have to check both at least, you know? It's like a normal thing for us, like just flip it around. Just one flip that could have changed everything. So, unfortunately, she wasn't able to do this because I think she was distracted again. Oh, so she said. Then, red flag number four. What would have to shake the bottle to reconstitute the medication, which is not a process for Versed and Midazolam? Yes, like I said earlier, Versed or Midazolam comes in a liquid form. So, if you need to get the medication, you just have to uh, aspirate it immediately. While for the Vecoronium, it comes with a powder form wherein after you mix it, then you have to make sure you have to shake it properly in order for the powdered form to be diluted uh, 100% before giving to the patient, right? And one way we normally do this is we shake it or we roll it. And after we do that, we have to check the bottom of the vial to make sure everything is like liquefied. Uh, and most of the time, we do notice the medication that we are mixing or shaking. So that could have um, flagged uh, Radonda that this medication was a wrong medication. Though sometimes we do try to look at the empty space at the bottle. So um, that could be a reason for her also. Then, number five, red flag. Vought would have to look directly at the red cup bottle with the inscription warning, paralyzing agent, and syringe in order to draw exactly one ml of medication in order to administer that particular dose. Yes, that is true. Uh, normally, when we pull the medication, we do look at the bottle. Normally, we do it like at eye level, right? It's like eye level. So, meaning the syringe is here and the bottle is over here. Meaning the bottle is upside down. So, you really can't treat it properly. Uh, though you kind of notice it still, but yeah, uh, on her defense, it's upside down. So, it's really hard to read that way. Then next on the comments below, what was informed that the staff in the pet could not administer the medication because they were running scans and could not monitor the patient after the medication was administered. Mm, that's weird. Normally, I never went to any hospital before that. Uh, the PET scan or any of the staff would give a medication to their patient. Uh, normally, it's the nurses who really give those medications. Um, so that's really weird for me. Then Vought administered the medication and immediately left the victim alone in the PET waiting room on a mobile bed yes i think that's one of her fault i think yes it does help you calm down but it can also make you like really drowsy and could cause you like to uh, harm yourself by falling down or not being mentally good over here because it's a medication that causes drowsiness right so i think you should have monitored a little bit more like few more minutes after giving that medication though in her defense it's just amidazolam it's not really that super strong uh, so she wasn't really expecting that uh, respiratory arrest would happen to her patient given that she's only given the midazolam. Then the victim would have shown signs of acute vecoronium intoxication which would have caused paralysis and respiratory failure within minutes after the drug was administered. And since Vo did not mandate observation protocols, the victim was left unattended when showing signs of onset of respiratory failure. But if she stayed for a few more minutes after giving that medication, then I think that could have been a game changer. If I'm not mistaken, I think it took like 30 minutes before someone actually saw her in the room, uh, not breathing or wherein they have to activate the rapid response. So 30 minutes versus like few minutes waiting, that could have been a game changer. Because one reason is a uh, patient was considered brain dead. I think that's the main reason why the family on the following day or in like a night, uh, they decided to take off the tubes for that patient because the patient's already brain dead. So there's no more point on actually doing any care for a particular patient if you know that patient would not come back given that the brain was deprived for a number of minutes, more than the amount that's like allotted in order for it to function properly again, even after doing the CPR and depriving the patient.
So if the nurse actually stayed for just a few minutes and she noticed the patient was having difficulty breathing or having signs of uh, paralysis, then she could have called the rapid response then within a few minutes and could have saved the patient, saved the patient, including uh, brain-wise. Uh, if she could have found within a few minutes, then they could have do, done CPR, then brain dead or brain damage could not have really happened to the particular patient, thus saving the patient. So those are the five warnings and five red flags committed by RN uh, Rodondo Vot on this particular patient, which was listed by the district attorney general. But the question is, was it right that she was criminally charged? On my nursing side, it tells me not really, not, not sure. I think civil cases would be more appropriate. But what if that patient is your family? It's like your mom, dad, brother, sister, boyfriend, husband, wife, or whatever who's really close to you. And that particular nurse killed that patient because she wasn't uh, paying attention or she was complacent or she was distracted. So how would you feel? Would you still go with the civil case or are you going with the criminal case right now? One more thing, family wasn't actually the one pushing the case against Rodon Davot. Uh, as per family, they already been settled, they've already been paid, so they were like keeping their mouth shut about this situation. So they were not trying to push this case against her. Which really makes you think more of what really is happening, which makes this case very interesting. So if you have any comments, suggestions, or protocols that you have in your previous work that could have prevented this, or any ideas that you want to put in, please comment down below on this video. Listening to different opinions coming from different nurses around the world is really an eye-opening, or like an eye-opener for me. So it's really nice to read those things. So please comment down below, okay? Feel free. So again, if you like this video, click the like button, subscribe button, and please share it with friends. Again, my name is Nurse Juan de la Cruz, your OFW nurse. Thank you for watching. God bless. Bye-bye. Stay safe.